Hi everyone, it's Melissa, and today I am doing another Friday Reads. I've been doing these fairly frequently lately because they are something that I can film without much editing, and I just haven't had as much time as I'd like or that I normally have to film videos and edit videos and that kind of thing, and I haven't had much time to read either. So that's where I'm at. I'm just had a very busy last two weeks and it's not really letting up yet. Um, I'm going to be busy basically until probably at least the middle of June. So it might just be Friday reads for a while or just no videos um, for a while. So that's kind of what's going on. Just a busy season right now. Um, but I have I haven't really finished anything, have I? I've I've been reading a little bit. Um, oh no, I did finish since last time. I did finish the two book two prize books that I was like halfway through. I finished those, so I'm like two thirds finished my book two reading. I have plenty of time to read the final two books, um, especially since I'm doing one on audio. And so I'm not worried about that. And those will be the two I'll prioritize over other things anyway. Um, I'm probably going to get started on those this weekend. But as for other reading, um, I have not finished, like I thought I would, uh, Slaughterhouse-Five. This is not a very big book. This is actually um, not as long as it looks. This has quite big font and there's like a lot of... Um, like big paragraph breaks and stuff so this isn't a long book but and I have been um enjoying this a lot more than the first time I read it I'm rereading this because I suspected that I probably just didn't get everything out of it the first time that I could have I didn't really care for it um I still don't think this is kind of like my style of writing or my type of story structure but I am getting a lot more out of it, which is great. Um, but yeah, I'm still only halfway through and it's not like I'm not picking it up. I'm just picking it up and I can really only read a couple pages because I'm just kind of swamped right now. So I'm halfway through Slaughterhouse-Five. Um, I've started, I think I've started this since last time I updated. Um, I've started Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. And I'm not very far into that book yet. Um, I'm reading it on ebook, and I might, I'm, I'm, I think I'm like, maybe like twelve percent or something like that. Um, so far, the writing is very much my kind of writing. Right from the get go, I could kind of tell that Claire Fuller's writing style is something that just uh, works for me. Um, I haven't really got into the story yet. So remains to be seen what I'll think of the book as a whole, but so far I, I really am enjoying the writing. That's where we're at with reading. Um, oh, and I wanted to update on, on other media because I've been talking about other media a little bit, um, and since I haven't done a whole lot of reading lately and can't really, you know, do many like wrap-ups or recent reads or whatever, um, I thought I'd share uh, some movies. So I have been sharing new to me movies that I've been watching this year. I am way behind the pace of where I wanted to be, um, but I'm catching up a little bit now. I did watch two new to me movies in the last couple of weeks. I watched um, Sense and Sensibility, um, which I loved as much as the book. Um, I really liked both Emma Thompson and Kate Winslet as the sisters. I think they did those characters justice. Like, I think they did them right. And the things that were changed for the sake of the movie, I think were the right things to change. Um, I think made the story stronger for, for that medium. And yeah, that was like a five out of five uh, for me. I just, love that's definitely, I think, my favorite Jane Austen adaptation. So, well, I don't know. The, pr 
Pride and Prejudice mini miniseries is pretty good too. I haven't seen a lot of Jane Austen adaptations. I've only seen like a handful. Um, but yeah, I think that one might be my favorite so far. Anyway, it was a delight. Uh, the other movie, sadly, I, I did not, I did not like, um, it wasn't my choice. I brought my daughter to the library and she likes to look at their like, uh, movie section and pick up movies for family movie night. And so I chose a movie and I chose Enchanted, which was enchanting. That was a rewatch for me. I've seen it many times. I love it. Um, and she chose Mirror Mirror, um, which she loved. She loved it. And I did not, um, I did not let my daughter know my true feelings because, you know, we don't want to squash the enthusiasm. We don't want to rain on her parade, but man, if you're not familiar, it's, so it's, um, Lily Collins as Snow White and, uh, I'm blanking on her name, Julia Roberts as the evil stepmother, evil queen. And this is 20, I want to say like a 2013, 2012 film, kind of like around that area, around that time, I mean. And um, it's a, so it's a Snow White kind of like retelling. And they took everything that was fun about Snow White out and then injected a lot of other crap that, uh, and like, Julia Roberts has been great in many movies she's been in. I have seen her be, like, just a fantastic actress in many, many films. And I don't know, I don't know what happened. The accent was all over the place. Decide if you're going to be American or British. Like, I don't know what was happening there. Well, yes, I do. She probably didn't have enough prep time for, like, dialect work. But that was a mess. Um, the storyline was like, just, it was, it was weird. It was weird. It was boring. It was way too long. Um, there, there was like a couple fun little scenes. Um, Nathan Lane was in it and boy, have I never seen Nathan Lane's talent wasted as I did with that film. You have Nathan Lane there put him to good use. The one good thing I have to say about that movie is the costumes. I was actually riveted by the costumes. The story, everything else, I was kind of like, ugh. But the costumes were out of this world. The, some of the best costume design I've ever seen in a movie. And I looked it up afterwards because I'm like, this must have won the Oscar that year. It did not. It was nominated, but it, it didn't win. And so I'm like, well, geez, what beat out this movie? And I looked it up and it was like Anna Karenina. Go look up some pictures of the costumes from those two movies and see which one you think should have won. Um, because I'm no costume expert, but like the costumes on Mirror Mirror were next level. They were so good. Anyway, that's that's the end of my rant about Mirror Mirror. Um, what else? Some music I've been listening to. So I think I've mentioned this before, but like I get earworms very, very easily. And I will get on like a kick where I listen to the same album, sometimes the same one or two songs like over and over and over again. And like, I mean on repeat, like I'll listen to them like five times in a row over many days in a row. That's just, I've always been like that. And lately, like very, very recently, I've gotten onto a Radiohead kick. Well, mostly an okay computer kick. That album, I forgot how good that album is. Um, I... I like the whole album. There's not a dud on there. Also been listening to their Bond theme for Spectre, which if you don't know the story, I'll actually, I'm going to link some stuff. So I'll link, um, I'll link some like Radiohead stuff, but I will link that song. So if you don't know that whole story, Radiohead um, were asked to do the Bond theme for Spectre. And they did it, but then when the, I don't know, producers, whoever makes these final decisions, heard the song, they decided, no, we're not going to go that that route. And they ended up um, commissioning, hiring, contracting, whatever, Sam Smith to do, what was the name of the song? I forget. L listen, Sam Smith, 
they're a wonderful singer. They've got a gorgeous voice. But that Bond theme um, was really boring, bland. But the, I think the song that Radiohead wrote, they just called Spectre. Um, but they ended up just releasing that sound for free, that sound, that song for free on SoundCloud, I think it was. So it's out there. I will link to their Bond theme, which like starts out really kind of like slow and it builds beautifully. And I thought it was a great Bond theme and I've been listening to that a lot too. Also, actually, I will link below a video from a channel I really enjoy called I always forget the channel name though. Listen in, listen up, listen in. Listening in? It might be listening in. Um, but they did a a video about kind of like deconstructing Radiohead's Bond theme and talking about Bond themes in general and kind of like, you know, how Bond scores work and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, I will link that video in case you're interested. It's, it's like less than 10 minutes, I think. It's a pretty short video, but um, they really talk about kind of like the musical structure of Radiohead's song. Anyway, I thought that was fascinating, so I will link that as well. So yeah, I think that's everything I've been reading and watching and listening to. Um, so as always, thank you all so much for watching, and we'll chat soon. Take care. Bye.